Welcome to the first live stream by Crew Assist. This weekly stream is going to give you the latest and greatest from the industry, along with some helpful tips on how you can stay relevant during a pandemic. And there'll be some more surprises to come. Since this is the first live stream we're doing, it is critical that you guys let us know what you think. Uh, suggestions, ideas, things that you want to hear more about, you know, send us a message on Facebook, send us an email, whatever your uh, preferred way of communicating is. We'd love to hear what you want more of. Uh, our current thesis is that you want to stay updated and you want to stay relevant, and that's what we're going to try to give you. Uh, we hope that you like the tips and advice you get today, as well as the discussions from our experienced recruiters on, on the market and where it's going. Uh, but remember, we're doing this for you. So please give us your suggestions. Uh, we'd love to hear them. Uh, if you have any, send them to crewassist at osmaviation.com or look up Crew Assist's Facebook page, LinkedIn page, whatever social media you're on, send us a message there. And I promise you that we're going to take it into account and keep working to make this weekly uh, newscast better and better for you. So thanks for tuning in. And we look forward to giving you some fantastic content moving forward. The unprecedented challenges due to the ongoing pandemic have led to a significant decline in revenues. Industries like hospitality, aviation, and travel are going through a difficult period, with cabin crew and pilots especially being deeply affected. Luckily, there are many opportunities to stay relevant during these extraordinary times. Some important skills that we feel are essential to keep relevant are emotional intelligence, adaptability, and education. Airlines and companies have started to focus more and more on these skills during assessments, as they are looking for how personnel are able to remain calm in tough situations, be open-minded to changes, and educational backgrounds that may be key skill set for on the job. Here we have a few suggestions to help you keep up to date. Free online courses. There are many courses currently available at your fingertips that can help you brush up on a current skill or even to help learn a new one. Volunteering. Several organizations around the world need help and support during COVID. Consider even going to your local community center or do a simple internet search within your area to see who may need support near and far. Learn a new language. Being fluent in more than one language is always seen as a plus when it comes to the airline industry, where you are traveling around the world and will of course interact with passengers and colleagues with dynamic backgrounds. No matter what you decide to focus on, just be sure to choose something and that would be beneficial and interesting to you. If you want to find out more tips and tricks about staying relevant during a grounding period or other services we offer, subscribe to our platform Crew Assist today. Uh, sorry, five, three, two, one. Uh, bye bye. You're yeah. frozen. Okay, I guess we all are. Don't see. I will try. Uh, good morning, Michael. Um, uh, how do you think airlines will act and react once the uh, recruitment starts up again? Good morning, Harold. Um, yeah, that's a very complex question because it's um, it depends on when we start up again. But the longer it takes, um, there are two scenarios, I guess. If, if the airlines prepare and survive, first of all, mm -hmm. and prepare for um, the, the restart, well, then it could be smoother. But it's hard to prepare when there's no money in the, in the box. And, um, and I believe there isn't with uh, most airlines as it is today. So believe that, uh, I believe that, um, let's say, take a scenario that uh, the COVID um, uh, vaccine is ready in about six months. And in about eight months, most people would be confident enough to, to travel again. Um, I would say that um, if we take the, the, the behavior of, of people, of passengers, or, or what we had as passengers before, many of them feel that they've been deprived uh, of something, mm. um, such as air travel, which is a luxury good for many and a necessity for, for many others. Mm. And both those groups have been deprived of something. And when people are deprived, like in Prohibition in the United States, things become very interesting. So more people started drinking then. And I believe that more people will actually find air travel as, you know, they were deprived of their, their rightful full travel uh, in, in a way. 
So I could see a scenario where there would be a lot of pressure on to yeah. restart aviation. Mm -hmm. There would be a lot of pressure from the shareholders to get, um, you know, get the money flowing again in the aviation business. Um, there's a lot of money owed because of uh, the incredibly expensive equipment and aircraft is. Um, mm -hmm. So all in all, there will be pressure from all sides, I think, mm -hmm. to get the business back on wheels as soon as possible. Yeah. Now, that creates bottlenecks because mm -hmm. there's a lot of people who are involved in it. You have to sell tickets. The ticket systems have to be up to date, up to speed. The people who are selling them, the people who are checking you in, the people who are loading the aircraft, they have to be back in, in business. They have to go back to work. And some of them might have left for other businesses uh, because they needed to feed their families. And that goes for baggage handlers, for uh, aircraft engineers, for airport workers, for pilots, for cabin crew, etc., etc. Hmm. So... There will be recruitment, mm -hmm. uh, but the big bottleneck, I think, will be retraining. True. Yeah. So, so once you start recruiting, fine, but retraining your people will need a lot of skilled people to train them, yeah. and it will need a lot of uh, c capacity, classroom Definitely. simulator, whatever you need um, to, to do that. Yeah. Do you see any safety issues or risks here um, when everything starts Sorry, up any again? Any safety the, issues or risks? Yes, um, there is a safety issue because there's been a lot of pressure on pilots, first of all. Um, pilots um, um, have been extended by almost default. So medicals have been extended. Um, there's been talks about two landings or one landing in 90 days instead of three landings in 90 days. There's been talks of, of uh, extending the um, licenses um, uh, for uh, four or six months. Mm -hmm. uh, a thing that I know if Alp has been uh, very vocal against, uh, the Inter International uh, Federation of Airline Pilots, because they find that um, if we erode the safety status we have now, we go back to something we want, something where accidents sure. happen more frequently. Yeah. And I can see their point. I can really see their point because... Many pilots, if you take the pilot who is the uh, most safety critical uh, when it comes to training, mm. would have been out of service for a long time. We yeah. haven't tried this before. When we have a new pilot, we usually have a senior pilot who takes care of the new pilot, mm. and they fly together so that the senior pilot can make sure that everything is safe. Now, we, we have a lot of rusty pilots. Mm. Uh, up there. Uh, and <laughs> we know that the skills itself flying an airplane usually stays in your spine but what about all the knowledge of the little bits yeah. how did the sure. FMC work yeah. to the optimum what if this safety critical thing happens do I remember all the steps I need to do mm. I need to have a very good picture in my mind before I organize my um, critical actions and that picture yeah. is sort of dwindling when you haven't flown for many many months True. Yeah. So we, we do believe that it's going to be a uh, it's going to be a demand for uh, flying again once the if the vaccine is coming and uh, the the restrictions are lifted, and we also see that it's going to be a challenge for the the companies uh, to start up again based on the fact that there could be a lot of pressure on the uh, simulators and whatnot. But what, in your expectations, when do you believe that we are going to see recruitment start, starting up again and that we are going to see more flying? I hope very soon because um, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of good results on the COVID vaccines. Yeah. Once we see a COVID vaccine start working, we will have to be scrambling. Mm -hmm. uh, I think airlines could be very well advised to use, and I know I work for OSM Aviation, but could be very well advised to use entities like OSM Aviation to support that startup mm. because yeah. they don't have all the resources. So they have to go to other companies and outsource some of the um, startup packages. Um, yeah. uh, a company like OSM could provide uh, recruitment, they could provide training, they could provide uh, backup for many functions, HR, mm. or others that may not be up and running. So, the, you know, they, they would be advised in, in that. Uh, mm. And uh, when does the your question is when when will recruitment start, uh, recruitment start as soon as there is a demand? 
because if it starts before there's a demand and we get a third wave or a fourth yeah. wave, um, yeah. we, we will simply kill what is left of the airline industry, I think. True. True. So, uh, yeah. so, so unless yeah. somebody has a big, big box of money for that, I don't think that will happen. Quite true. Uh, thank you so much. I think uh, the monitoring the situation will be uh, crucial for the companies uh, going forward to be in a position because it will take time as well to retrain the number of staff that are needed to start up the operation again. Yeah, I think, you know, the airline business sometimes is survival of the fittest or survival of the cheapest. <laughs> it depends on how you see it. Or, or the smartest. But, you know, who, you know, there will be um, airlines that were in a phase of startup that would have been killed by this because in your startup phase you have to borrow a lot of money and you can't take a COVID situation when you had to borrow a lot of money. But the more stable airlines, the older airlines, the the, uh, the bigger airlines uh, would be able to reduce and reduce until we start up again. But once we start up, as we've seen before over and over again, yeah. new airlines will pop up yeah. like Mushroom in the field, you know, all over the place. There will be and competition will increase, and I believe there will be there will be a lot of uh, um, possibilities for people who want to fly. But yeah. we have to monitor the safety aspects. Good selection, good training, and good recurrence. Mm. That's, that's what's needed. Thank you so much. With those words, I think we wrap it up for today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Welcome to the Pulse Premier Edition of Crew Assist by OSM Aviation offering you what's happening where, why, and how in our industry. Airline update stubbornly returning to the skies. Is it safe to fly these days? Yes, it's very safe to fly. High efficiency particular air filter HEPA provides a high level of air freshness in the cabin and effectively filters out up to 99.97 of airborne viruses. Masks on board further limits the risks of transmission. A study conducted by MIT Medical monitored a passenger who flew from Wuhan to Toronto with COVID-19 and was wearing a mask, and no other person in that flight got infected. Airlines and many international bodies are pushing for COVID-free tested and approved flights, whereby passengers are medically screened before boarding. This aims to eliminate on-arrival quarantine restrictions and other procedures that are causing a slowdown in the global industry recovery and create significant airline schedule uncertainties. Ocean is the name of a new Lufthansa airline that will be dedicated for long haul touristic flying, expected to operate in 2022, but potentially in 2021 with a short haul network. What's in common between Korean Air and Ethiopian Airlines? They actually made a profit so far this year and even during the pandemic, highly leveraging on their cargo belly capacity, dedicated freighters and converted ones. Airports, gateways to the global village. Strong industry call for in-airport testing before flights is the highlight of the week. A new COVID gargle test may perhaps be the ticket to rapid and reliable pre-boarding testing. AI is paving the way for airport recovery. Vienna Airport City is introducing a real-time chatbot, B-bot to limit human interaction in crowded places and reduce infections. Aerospace, where the future is created. Zero E new concepts, three of them revealed by Airbus for hydrogen aircraft. And the notorious Boeing 737 MAX is perhaps a few weeks and not months away to safely returning to the skies. In a recent commercial outlook report published by Boeing, the company concludes that it will likely take about three years for air travel to return to 2019 levels. And a few years beyond that for the industry to return to long-term goal trends. On the medium-term basis, the company points to emerging market economies, increased consumer spending, and a bolstering demand for air travel, as well as the proven resiliency of the aviation industry, important factors in the recovery of air travel globally. Fun fact of the week, 
Helsinki Vanta Airport introduces COVID-19 dogs. Our friendly dogs will be trained to detect and identify those infected with the virus. A specialized study in Helsinki University believes that dogs are able to determine smells at 100% certainty. They also claim that the dogs will even have the ability to detect those still not showing any symptoms. Henry Ford famously said, when everything seems to be going against you, remember that the airplane takes off against the wind, not with it. Stay relevant, stay sharp, be ready. Crew Assist by OSM Aviation. Testing, yeah. and just press on number one when I'm in the frame. Um, how's it looking, Grim? The picture, if you look there on the screen. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Okay, guys and girls, we hope you enjoyed this first live stream that we put together for uh, for you. Uh, we sure learned a lot trying to make this happen, and we're going to keep improving on it, making forward, uh, going forward, I should say. Uh, there is, uh, if you have any opinions now, right off the bat, feel free to type them in the chat. We'd love to hear your feedback. Uh, if something comes to mind later, send us an email. Once again, crewassist at OSM Aviation, or hit us up on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on any of our social media uh, channels. We'd love to hear from you. We make this for you so you can get valuable information, stay up to date, and stay current. So give us your opinions. We'd really love to hear it. And thank you so much for tuning in today. It was a pleasure. We look forward to all